Hi, what's up guys? It's Hannah from Isopod Source, and today we are here to talk about these guys. So today we're talking about Kubara species rubber ducky for many reasons. We get questions all the time about how to care for them, and it has been controversial in the past, but a lot of people are getting the hang of it. Back when I first got into isopods, a little over two years ago, and these just came into the hobby, no one knew how to take care of them, no one knew how to get their hands on them, and now we know a lot more. So what we know about rubber duckies is that they're a Thai species, they're found in Thailand, uh, pretty much in and surrounding caves, meaning we have to care for them just a little bit differently and in a special way versus other isopod species. What we know about caves is that there's limestone there, so that's something that we add to our substrate right away. Normally our substrate contains uh, compost, occasionally peat moss, we add sphagnum leaves, decaying wood, all of which you're gonna see here in a second, um, but something we add, especially here, is limestone. So we add it in a couple ways. It it's all up to you to decide what you want to try, what you don't want to try, but this is the way we have been having success. A lot of other people have had success using this, so that's what we've been doing for We use Lime Garden. You can pretty much find a bag like that anywhere at Walmart, Target, Home D Lowe's. <laughs> so what we do with the Lime Garden, it's pretty much a granulated mixture. I'll show you guys looks like that just looks like sand it's for plants it's for your garden and potting plants but what we do we take about a teaspoon depending on how much substrate we're making whether it's five gallon like a five gallon bucket or a huge 40 gallon tote we add we dilute it with hot water and we pour it right in and we hand mix it to make sure that it gets distributed evenly there isn't too much in one spot and none in any other spots we do the same thing we hand mix it with leaves the sphagnum moss and decaying wood which we by hand crush up so here's what one of our enclosures looks like so what we have right here is our kubaris rubber ducky bin this is a 12 quart container I believe it is 15 inches by 11 inches. As you can tell, we do have holes here on the sides. They are small little drilled holes for ventilation. We do not use a vent because that provides too much airflow. That is just enough, and especially with these loose fitting lids that do latch on conveniently, it creates the perfect amount of ventilation. So here is a bin that was misted about a couple days ago. You can tell that it has since dried out a tiny bit and we're just gonna go over everything in here. Here we have a magnolia seed pod. We have a piece of limestone. Here we have some charcoal, a little bit of dried out moss that we replace every so often, and a ton of decaying wood. Here are, so let's see some of the isopods in here. You can tell there are a lot of springtails. This isn't focusing, because obviously I'm doing this on my phone. Here are some of the rubber duckies. And all the white spots are springtails. They don't really bother them. They can coexist together and it's pretty beautiful. So all bins are not gonna look the same. Every single isopod tote is gonna be organized in a different way, however you set it up that first time you sat down and got the duckies in the bin. And that's okay. Some have more sphagnum, some have more limestone, some have more decaying wood, as long as you keep replenishing those things as they go through them. So here is another one of our bins. This right here is another 12 quart bin. This is our raise up bin where we put some of the duckies that are just growing up and we wanna set them aside from the adults so they have ample space to breed. You can tell again, we have loads of decaying wood. We have a fossil. Boom, boom, boom. And a rubber ducky. And that is also a source of calcium. Here we have more rubber ducky goodness. Oops. 
So for the rubber duckies diet, like I said, they mostly consume all of the detritus that's already in their substrate, the leaves, the decaying wood, lichen, etc. But we do supplement our isopods at least once a week. It's different every week. For certain species, they get the same thing every week. Different ones will pretty much eat anything. So one of the things we use is this Rapashi morning wood. The isopods love it, pretty much all of them. It has vitamins and minerals, which pretty much make it taste like detritus to them, except better because it's already packed full of those things. It doesn't mold in the, in the side of the tubs, uh, pretty much at any temperature or humidity, as long as it's made and then it's fed off or it's kept refrigerated. The other things we use is we use the full line of the Vivariums in the Mist food. Um, I like to say supplement because it really isn't their main diet, but it is food. <laughs> Um, one of my favorites are these iso greens. They are loved by all of our isopods, especially the Kubaris. They love to eat them and drag them away in their enclosures. I'll try to fit in a little video of that. So another few things that are important to note about rubber duckies is that they are considered a little bit more advanced species only because they're extremely slow growers. They're not something like an Armadillidium vulgare or some of the beginner porcelio stuff like Dilatatus, Slavis, that you're, or Scaber that you're going to see offspring within months and they're going to be almost adult size several weeks later. These guys take a very long time, at least six to eight months to become sexually mature and then their gestation period is around two months. We haven't been able to observe it to the day, but that's about how long it takes to see babies from already sexually mature adults and knowing that you have a pair. Uh, it takes, they take a lot of time to settle in. Sometimes people set them up and they get them breeding within months. Sometimes it takes people all the way up to a year just to reach the peak condition where they feel super comfortable and they just start pumping out babies. They have broods of about eight to 15 sometimes less depending on how healthy they are how big the female is and all that um so they're a little bit more rewarding you have smaller treasures <laughs> and in case you guys haven't noticed i'm wearing a kubaris rubber ducky rubber ducky you're the one exclusive isopod source t-shirt you can get yours now at isopodshop.com uh, thank you guys for listening to me ramble about rubber duckies for however long this is going to be. Hopefully not too long, and hopefully I answered some questions in terms of care and how it's not super different from any other isopod.